Well, I was always afraid of public speaking, so that's why I joined Toastmasters. And because of that, it was just the practice and the repetition. I started to feel a little bit more comfortable. Then at work, um, my bosses noticed I became a trainer. Uh, I had the, um, I, I expected to lose my job with the down cuts of the economy. Uh, but instead, I was promoted into another job uh, because of my speaking ability, primarily because no longer afraid to communicate. And uh, it, it just, it continues to blossom. I, I don't know that I am seeking great things uh, professionally, but I'm very comfortable, very happy with what I have achieved and, and my position. That's a crazy story because a Toastmasters club was being started where I work. I wanted nothing to do with it. I would have rather had teeth pulled than to go to that meeting. But people kept asking. I ran out of excuses. That, that is literally why I went to the first meeting uh, because I had run out of excuses. I wanted to go one time so I'd have the excuse that, you know, done that, tried it, no thanks. But within that first meeting, I stood up and, and gave what we call a table topic. That's about a minute, minute and a half. I sat down. People critiqued me in a very nice way. I didn't remember anything that I had said, even though I had just sat down. I realized that's a handicap. And so I had been dealing with a handicap for most of my life that I just decided to fight it. I speak within uh, a lot within Toastmasters and sometimes outside of Toastmasters. The groups range anywhere from 10 to 15 to 3 to 400. Uh, it just doesn't make any difference anymore. Uh, how many, how big the audience is or what the audience is, uh, I need to feel comfortable with whatever message I'm giving. But other than that, uh, it's, it's no longer the people that I'm afraid of. Yeah. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. I know what the message needs to be. And a lot of times that is the hardest thing. What do you want them to leave with? What do you want them to remember? Sometimes I spend days just on that question. What do I want them, that one little nugget, to walk away with? Once I have that, then I develop everything that I'm going to say around making sure that that happens and then practice. Mm -hmm. Right, it's really what you would call your closing statement that I have to know first. I have to know the closing statement and then I make my beginning statement based off of that and then I create the, the uh, text based off where I want to go, how I want to get there. They should always use stories. They should always make it personal. If you do not connect with your audience on a personal level, you have failed. And the way to not fail in that way is to make it a personal story, to give of yourself. Well, you know, I'm thinking of we just started a humor club. And the reason that we started the humor club is because so many people have an idea, but they don't connect. And so if you can add just a little bit of humor around it, uh, then it helps. And, and so we've created this club to teach us how to be just a little bit more humorous and, and connect. Uh, the stories are most of the time about me. And even if it's not about me, if, if I read a book, and the intent has nothing to do with anything I've ever dealt with. I at least have a feeling when the book is over. Somehow, if it was important enough for me to read and important enough for me to speak about, there was a feeling in there. And what is my feeling? And how did I acknowledge that feeling? That's a story about how I got into Toastmasters. That fear was so real and I have learned that I'm not unique. There is nothing unique about that at all, that 
but I was 50 years old when I joined Toastmasters. And so my life was definitely on the second half. No, no, it's never too late. No, no, I've actually come, in my mind, a long ways. With the cutbacks, I should have been the first one to be let go, and and I wasn't. My actually, my lead was let go. And humor is an interesting thing because humor is not about one-liners. My wife gave a humorous speech last night, and she was talking about uh, when we were first married. Uh, there were mice in the house, and you know, if it wasn't for Safeway, I'd starve to death. Uh, so I'm not a hunter at all. And in fact, I didn't want to have to deal with dead mice. Uh, and she discovered that very on in our marriage, because we ended up with a house full of mice, mm -hmm. that I eventually had to, to uh, get rid of. Uh, and it was, it was weeks mm -hmm. of mouse traps going off in the middle of the night and getting up and taking care of business. And, you know, so, you know, it's funny when you look back at it, but it wasn't funny at the time. The, you know, that would be a very difficult question. I've given hundreds of speeches now. When I, when I personalize them, when I make them the story about me, when I believe in the subject, I give a lot of uh, speeches about Toastmasters because I truly believe in it. And, uh, and they're easy to give because I believe in the subject. Uh, and that's would be my best. I walk away feeling good. Yeah. I don't get back in my car and say, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that. Or sometimes I might even say, I shouldn't have come. You know, it just feels horrible inside. Mm -hmm. And yet, that's not a reason to give up and that's not a reason to quit trying. Mm -hmm. uh, just work on making it better. Well. That's an interesting question, uh, the emulate, because there is a lot of speakers that I have a lot of respect for. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be like them. Mm -hmm. I want to read their books. I want to watch their speeches. I want to glean what I can from them, mm -hmm. but I want to be me. Mm -hmm. And so that, and I see a lot where people spend a lot of money to have somebody train them, and when they get done, they sound just like the person that trained them. It's not the intent. It's, that's not the way to be a good speaker. Have to keep it real. Uh, Darren LaCroix is a big name within the Toastmasters world. He is one of those that uh, you could hire to, to coach. I've listened to a lot of his tapes. I've seen him several times. He gives the same speech every time. It's not like he has three speeches mm -hmm. and he gives them all just over and over and over mm -hmm. as if they're new, as if he's saying it for the very first time. Oh. And so this is a person that you could take his speech and if you had this one and this one you could lay them side by side and they would be exactly the same words mm -hmm. and yet they're fresh. Mm -hmm. To me, that's an art, because I can get tired of hearing myself. I don't use a lot of props. I sometimes use PowerPoint, uh, and I'm always afraid of death by PowerPoint, so I use it very sparingly. Uh, but other than that, the suggestion is something like what you're doing right now. Tape yourself. See yourself. Uh, know that every time you have done some things that you did very well. Be proud of yourself. There are some things that you could have done a little different. See them, acknowledge them. I, when you evaluate a speaker, there's always a, a, a gut reaction to give them ideas to improve. But sometimes the most important thing to a speaker is to tell them what they did well. Sometimes if you take the things you do well and strengthen that, mm -hmm. then the things that you do not so well are overlooked. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah, strengthen what you're good at, mm -hmm. pay attention to what you're not, mm -hmm. um, and work on them. See if you can guess what the questions are going to be. Prepare. Mm -hmm. 
some answers. Uh, and it's okay to have a ringer in the audience to ask the first question or to ask a question if things start, there's a lull, to have a ringer out there with some questions that you already know the answers to. Uh, but trying to second guess the audience on the questions they might have uh, would be helpful, which goes back to what is that nugget that they want to leave with. If you know that, then you probably know some of the questions that are going to be asked. Uh, and you can cover them in your speech, or you can purposely not and wait for the question answered. Being too self-conscious, I think, is, that is by far the biggest. Uh, they walk away and, oh, they were horrible. They should have done this. They should have done that. And, you know, it's, it's not all that important. Do it again. Keep doing it. It'll eventually get better. How to answer that question? I took communications in college, and I had to give a five-minute presentation, and I waited till the very end, and it was the most horrible night of my existence. Uh, speaking can be fun, but you don't know that until you've done it a few times, and you have to make it fun. It's like, it's like anything else. Once you get the hang of it, then it becomes fun. So don't put it off. Jump in. Give some speeches. Uh, if, if there is a vacancy and you have an extra speech lined up, give a, see if you can get an extra one in just for the practice. I, in Toastmasters, we have a manual. has 10 speeches in it. Each one has different objectives. And I had to work at it so hard in the beginning that as soon as I finished one speech, I was working on the next. Most people would wait until they had, were notified they're going to give a speech in a couple of weeks or, mm -hmm. or whenever. But I didn't because it was such a fearful experience that as soon as one was over, I was on the next one, just starting to practice. And that worked. It did work. It worked very well, yes. Uh, so. I, I would suggest that. Just, you know, don't be afraid of it. Everybody's afraid of it. Well, 99% of everybody's afraid of it. Except that you're just part of the crowd. Well, you're, you're endorsing preparation. Yes. Yes. I am. Yes. A strong endorsement on preparation. Yes. And especially in the beginning, because there becomes a time when you don't need to prepare so much, when you have a lot of tools in your toolbox mm -hmm. and you can pull them out and use them without a lot of notice. But you have to create that toolbox. And it doesn't come natural. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not necessarily easy. Well. No. And in fact, when I wing a speech now, even after I've given hundreds, it doesn't come off so well. Mm -hmm. I need to be prepared. Actually, no, I wasn't thinking of, I was thinking more of the questions that you might, I don't know what I expected. Just that, as in everything else in life, speaking is something that we need to do. Don't be afraid of it. If you can speak to one person, then you can speak to two, then you can speak to ten, and then a hundred is actually easier. Why is that? You're not having to look uh, so closely into the eyes. You're still seeing the eyes, but you don't have to look into them so quite so deeply.